Hey, Leo Drager here. I want to cover an ICMP tunneling lab. Um, it's relatively easy to do. Most of these ICMP tunneling tools come in basically a client option and a server option. So I just happen to have my server over here running, a Windows 2000 advanced server. Um, and I'm going to show you, let's go ahead and do a directory to... Uh, the C drive and you can see I have both the client and the the server here so it's ICMP SRV and, uh, and the client is ICMP send so what we're gonna do is do IP uh, ICMP SRV and hit enter and it actually tells us the usage of this so in this case we need to do an ICMP SRV dash install to install the service or dash remove to remove the service so we'll let that be our guide dash install okay and it'll say the the service exists it's already running and it's running and that's basically what you would like to see so that means the the server is listening now um, and if you wanted to poke around at netstat just uh, compare um, you basically can look around here, but there's nothing too too obvious that to, to see that like there's an ICMP service, and that's because this mostly looks for the upper layer um, uh, applications as opposed to the lower level ports. Okay, so it's not too much of a tell that this is being used on the server. All right, so we'll clear the screen there. Uh, and just to make sure that my uh, service is installed, I'm just going to run it again and it'll just tell us, okay, it already exists. Then I'm going to switch over to my uh, client and open up the command prompt. Okay. And uh, this actually have stored over here on the root of C. So directory, ICMP, star, and you can see ICMP sender for the client and server uh, for the server. So let's do an ICMP uh, send. And it's, uh, it's always a good idea to, to check your IP address of the server. So in this case, we can do an IP config just to see that we're running at 192.168.1.8. And we'll use that as our target, 192.168.1.8. Uh, and if you get a command prompt here directly, that's always a good sign. So, And it also tells you the usage on the client side as well, ICMP send and remote IP. Now, to make things just a little bit more interesting here, we're also going to start Wireshark. Okay. And I'm going to do this... Um, just to kind of capture some of the traffic that's going back and forth between the client and the server so you actually can see this. I'm going to cover this later in the sniffing section, uh, but it's always nice to kind of tie them together when I, whenever I can. So I'm going to go to my interface, um, go ahead and uh, click start here. I'm going to check connectivity um, from my client as well. So uh, let's do a ping 192.168.1.8 and you can see I'm getting a successful reply back so uh, I know I'm connected at this point and <clears throat> we can just start running a command so basically you can see you do a Q or uh, to quit or H for help so if I just do an H it basically you can see some of the uh, the commands that you can do remotely like I can list the process or kill a particular process ID or run a specific command of my my choosing so I just do a directory here and if you see this go, it'll basically say ICMP packet is 16. Um, send the packet to 192.168.1 success, and then I got a timed out. Now my research into this particular error suggests that there's a problem with the install running, and sometimes crazy things happen in the virtual machine. But nonetheless, we don't necessarily need to see the commands execute to prove that this works because that's where we can bring in the sniffer. Okay, so. If you expand the sniffer and go down to the ICMP, there's not much realistically in it that we realistically can see. So you have your types and your codes, and you're always interested in those. And again, we'll cover those in the sniffing section. Uh, a checksum, an identifier, a sequence number, and some data.
Okay, so if I highlight this data section here, you can see the command that I, that is actually being sent. Now again, it timed out uh, for whatever reason, but nonetheless, I can actually pull the commands out of the data portion of the packet, and that's ultimately proving that I, even though I didn't get a response back to, from the server, that ultimately the the traffic was tunneled within ICMP in the data portion of the packet. Um, so nonetheless, it's just a matter of realistically researching searching why it's not connecting and um, and go from there. Now another thing I can do here while I'm in Wireshark is just filter for ICMP. As you notice I get a lot of responses back um, between the client and the server and I'm not necessarily interested in that at this point. These are ICMP types and codes so I'm sending the echo request which is a type 0 and I'm getting a reply which is a, a type um, a type zero but if I scroll through here I can kind of read this information now this is a normal ping request here I can I can tell you that because it's actually just the alphabet A B C D E F G E H I J etc and basically repeating itself uh, but in the other uh, portions of the packets you can see the directory command was actually sent across and the cool part is is I can actually just keep sending commands and I can see what commands get sent I can do an IP config um, I can do a net stat, I can do a PS list, okay, and I'm just showing you that it does get encapsulated, and if I scroll to the bottom of the, the, the list, there's my IP config, specifically right here, or the net stat right here. Okay, and so that's what you would look at if you actually wanted to find the information as it's going back and forth. Otherwise, if while I scroll up, if you just look down here, all of this alphabet soup here, that's just normal ping responses, and that's a that's what a normal packet would look like, where these tunneled um, uh, packets in here nets that it actually proves that we are tunneling with ICMP. So I'll let you guys have some fun with that. Um, Enjoy the lab. ICMP tunneling can be done. It's relatively easy. You just got to set up a listener on the server and then connect to the server from the client and then just tell it what data to send back and forth. Relatively easy. Um, as long as you have all the right ingredients, you'll be baking cookies in no time.